How's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I create my signature shorts on YouTube. And I'm talking about my coding shorts, how I do that from scratch. So I'll be showing you how you can do that so you can start creating your very own coding shorts. Now, the first thing I want to mention is that I do everything on my MacBook. And I'm sure the process can be very similar on Windows, but I can only show you how I do this on Mac. So to get started, I'm going to close this window because now we see what a short usually looks like. And the first thing we're going to do is open up PyCharm. And I use PyCharm when I create all my shorts because it has some very nice visual features. And at the moment, it's just a normal code editor in horizontal mode. But as you might have guessed it, when I create a short, I like to drag this and make it as vertical as possible. And these are not random dimensions. I actually went over and created a frame once so that I could see exactly the dimensions for that short. So right now we have a window here that's 180 by 1920. And those are the dimensions I use for my YouTube shorts. So I do something very rustic and now I'm just going to open up PyCharm and usually I would drag it around here and maybe put it around there. So it's roughly the right ratio. But I mostly use PyCharm for the view feature. If you go to view and go under appearance, you can enter something called distraction free mode. And that makes the code editor super clean without all of that clutter. Now, if I want to run code, all I have to do is hold command plus R and it will run the code at the bottom. So now you can see how it's starting to look more like a short. Something you can also do is delete that and delete that. And while you're explaining something, you just hold Command Z and you can insert the code and explain it as you are pasting it. Then you can say, okay, next we're going to create a print statement. And that's going to look like that. So now you know that with var equals, you have this special syntax. And as you might have noticed, I have my watermark at the top because a lot of people love to steal these shorts. And if it wasn't for the YouTube copyright system, a lot of people would get away with that. But even if they do get away with that, it's hard to get away with not seeing this watermark. So if you make some YouTube shorts and you don't want people stealing it without putting any effort into stealing it, just add a watermark. It's okay to copy concepts. It's just not okay to copy and paste videos exactly the way they are and rebrand it with your own name. So if you want to teach this concept, fine, type it out yourself, but just don't download the video and re-upload it. Anyway, so now we have this window here, but how do I record this? Well, on Mac, we have something called QuickTime Player, and this is the recording software I use for all of my recordings. So first I would open that, then I would right click and I'll tap on new screen recording. And here you have a few options. You can record the entire screen or you can record a section. And as you can see, I have my section here that's already prepared for shorts. And I would usually do something like this. It's already set to a ratio that I use all the time. So what I showed you earlier might not really matter, but this ratio is set up by default for me since it's what I always use. And to record, I just tap on record and then I start doing my thing. And I would even move the window a bit down here. Now, depending on how complex the code of the short is, I might increase the font size or decrease the font size. So it really depends on what I'm doing. But usually I would try to increase it as much as possible because when you have to read code on a small device, it's just a lot more convenient that the code is actually of a decent size. Then I would run the code and say, okay, here's your result, blah, blah, blah. And I would stop the recording. I would tap on stop here and then I would have this brute recording. And this is before processing. So I still need to edit the footage because usually I make a lot of mistakes even if it's 50 seconds, I usually cut maybe 10 or 12 times minimum. So right now we have this, I'll save it as a file, or actually it's already saved here, and we can call it short. Then the next step is to edit it. So I go to iMovie, which is a free movie editing software provided by Mac. You're going to have to use something different on Windows. I'm not a Windows user, so I can't help you with that. But this is the software I use. And I just drag my short here and then I start doing my editing. So I'd say, okay, I need to edit this section out. So I'll delete that, remove that. I need to edit this section out as well. Move that, delete that. Of course, I would listen to the audio before doing all of this. So now we can pretend that we actually edited the short and this is what we have left. But there is one problem and that is that if we render it like this, it's not going to render as a short. It's actually going to have this black background and YouTube is not going to recognize that as a short. So in iMovie, there's actually a workaround. So you're going to have to highlight all of the clips 
and then rotate them. So now we have a horizontal video, although the user, of course, is not going to have this as a final product. So let's export this so I can show you the final step for my short. I would give it some crazy title such as this is my short and I would save it to my desktop. And this is already getting a bit cluttered. That's just how I do it. I should think of a better system there, maybe have an output folder. But this is what I have so far. And once it has finished rendering, I'm going to have this as a product, a sideways video of my final short. And I can actually close iMovie at the moment and I can close PyCharm. So I can show you that this is what I have and maybe put the volume down. And that is a fully functioning short horizontally. But of course, that's not what we want. So once again, on Mac, you can hold Shift Command plus R for right rotate, and it's going to turn it back to its vertical position. Then when you try to exit out of it, you can save it as the final product. So final product short. And then it's going to render it as a short in a vertical position. Now I can actually remove the other two video files because I won't be using that. And at the end of this crazy process, we're going to end up with this short over here. So in total, this can take anywhere between five and 15 minutes, depending on the complexity of the short. Then I just upload this to YouTube because once you upload a video in vertical format, it's going to recognize that as a short. And that's the entire process that I go through when I have to create shorts on YouTube. And then of course you can put these on TikTok or even on Instagram. It's just good that you create your own shorts. I know a lot of you out there are probably very talented when it comes to sharing information, but just haven't had the opportunity yet to actually start doing it. There probably will be someone out there that will appreciate your explanation since we all explain things in different ways. I mean, when I started my channel, I didn't go in with the mentality that there are a million Python videos. I just went in with the mentality that I have a different way of teaching and some people are going to prefer some styles of teaching over others. So I highly encourage you not to be discouraged by all the videos that are already out there on YouTube because everyone has their own way of teaching and sometimes you can easily gain an audience based on your way of teaching. But anyways, guys, I hope you found this video interesting. If you do create some shorts, do let me know in the comments section down below. I would love to see them. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.